Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. I am going to do some abstract paintings, well kind of just some abstract experiments actually. I have been playing with these granulating paints and just some old favorites of mine, uh, which is the tint here and the buff titanium. And I wanted to just kind of do some little paintings, just some abstract ones to get some ideas for bigger paintings. So I don't really work super big. I think the biggest I kind of do is probably 11 by 17, but this is sort of a eight by 10 cut into four here. And what I'm doing is just kind of going with the flow and doing some abstract marks and trying to come up with some ideas for composition. But I'm really not thinking about anything other than just what's in my heart <laughs> at this point. So I'm just sort of doing some brush strokes here. I'm doing some right across all the four quadrants and then later on I kind of work on each in a bit more detail. But like I said, I'm not really thinking conceptually of anything like a landscape or a, uh, a scene or anything like that. I am just putting down some brush strokes and seeing how these colors work together. And I find this approach of sort of splitting a canvas into four different quadrants a really freeing experience and if you've got sort of artist block or you really don't know what to do or you've just got new art materials and you're like oh, I, don't, I don't want to paint anything that's real today <laughs> you know the added pressure of that too then this is a great exercise because you can just concentrate on how the paint is applying and how the colors are interacting with each other or how it's behaving with more water or less water if you know if you're doing watercolors uh, so it's a really freeing experience and I would give it a go if you just don't know what to paint that day uh, it's great and when you look at these at the end they all turn out pretty different even though you're on the same canvas here in each quadrant you kind of once those initial marks are done it kind of leads you in a different direction for all four of them I think the key to this too is also working with a pretty limited palette that tends to just narrow it down for you you can concentrate more on the synergy of these colors together you might choose colors that don't work together but this will be an exploration to see that they don't work together and on the flip side of that you might find some magical combinations where these two colors mix on the paper and you didn't know that they were going to interact like that and create this color so it's worth just giving this a go and not worrying too much about the final product, just the process and getting to know your materials. You know, and I think as artists, which I believe pretty much everybody in the world is an artist of some kind, and I believe we put so much pressure on ourselves to create something, I don't know, profound. And it's not always going to be like that. This is supposed to be a journey. This is supposed to be discovery and just sharing it with others and getting feedback from others is so helpful. And you know, that's why I'm sharing this. This is just a little you know, experiment that I'm doing by myself <laughs> in my house. I'm not working with any other artists or anything. And it's just for me to sort of check out this, these materials, which is an important step in creating art. Because if you don't know what your materials do, then you can't, you can't use them the way you want. You can't express the vision that you have in your, in your heart and your brain. So going into these exploratory paintings, take the pressure off yourself you don't know what the outcome of this is going to be. It's going to be exciting either way. And when I cut these up into the four little paintings, you'll see that they're pretty different from each other. Even though we used this limited palette and some of those lines were connected to each other, they end up being these little adventures in themselves. And that's really fun. And it's a great way to get your creative juices flowing. You may want to always work this small. I've seen some fantastic little tiny small pieces that have so much interest and emotion and depth to them or you may not like the direction of any of these but i bet you will discover something 
just letting go and making these marks is always helpful it always helps you grow it always helps you learn how to express yourself so I definitely think it's a worthwhile thing to try this bottom left hand quadrant I decided to go super bold and put in some of that spinel gray uh, and I just sprayed a little bit of water on there to give it some texture I think I probably wanted to do a little more there but I didn't want to overdo it or remove too much of the paint but I think it would look really cool with a gradient but we'll see when we chop it up whether it works or not uh, having that contrast there and then down in this quadrant here, I'm going to use the forest gray. And I think this is the only one I use the forest gray in. So this is that kind of greenish, grayish color. And then for this one, I think I wanted to go a little lighter. Yeah, so I'm using the, the buff titanium here because uh, I've already sort of experimented with the darker colors. So I wanted something a bit lighter here that I wanted to work some other color into, I think. So we can see that tundra violet there just ebbing into the water, which is so beautiful. I mean, that's a big characteristic of these granulating colors. When you add more water, you really get that effect. And I added a ton of water here. <laughs> and you'll see when it dries, it's a super interesting halo effect um, that I may or may not want to use in other works. And you can see I'm moving the board around a lot. I'm sort of analyzing each little painting as its own now and seeing what it needs and just how I feel the direction should go. Just adding some small details. But even though they started off as one big sort of painting, now these have got their own personality and I'm just sort of working on each and ignoring the one around it. And I'm kind of going from one to the other, which is actually really fun. Uh, sometimes when you're working on a bigger piece, you kind of get caught up in it and you lose sight of what's going on. But rotating this around and working on one while the other one dries is actually really refreshing. And you can just keep trying different things or, you know, apply the same thing that you just tried to, to another one to see how that works out. Uh, but it just sort of frees you from the limitations of just working on one piece. You've got these four going at the same time, 
which may seem overwhelming, but it's actually pretty freeing. And I'm just spraying some water in here because I want to see if that bleeds out and how that interacts with the two different uh, colors there. So now I'm just sort of <laughs> moving my paintbrush over the piece, seeing whether it needs anything else and whether I want to put extra details on there. So sometimes I'll just move my brush over the paper without touching it. Here I am wetting it, but before just sort of sizing up what it would look like if I added something there. So I don't know, that just helps me in the process of visualizing it to see whether I want to add anything in a certain place. Yeah, so I decided not to put anything in there, but I just wanted to see maybe what it would look like. So I think that's pretty much it for the painting part. And I'm going to go in and add some more details after this is dry. Uh, this is the Neo Color 2s. So these are the water soluble ones, but I'm not actually going to activate them. I just love how soft they are and the, the texture is just really interesting on this paper. So again, no rhyme or reason for this, just following, I don't know, just some innate desire to see more texture on the page. And you can see how that forest gray there dried out with all the little separate colors. And again, just doodling, just not trying to do anything in particular, just adding texture where I think it needs it. And in here, I felt like I wanted that texture as well, even though it had all these beautiful water blooms in there. I just wanted to add a little more interest. And that's just a watercolor pencil there. Actually looks gold, but it's more of just like a khaki color. And now we're ready to take the tape off. Always satisfying. So these are the little finished pieces. And I'm just kind of rotating them around to see which orientation I like best for this composition. You can see all that texture in there. And where I sprayed the water, how that interacted with the paint. Yeah, so I decided that this looks good this way. And the next one, this is that one with the whole big bunch of spinel gray in it. I think this feels like a portrait kind of composition as well. And we got this one with all that water that made the tundra violet separate into the that rusty brown color plus all the purple and blue. Oh, it's so delicious, isn't it? So this one to me looked more like a landscape version. And then the last one, actually this one's my favorite. I really like this and I think I want to explore this sort of use of the, with the tundra violet there. I really love that. And it almost looks like a snowscape to me with sort of trees in the background and then a frozen river and then some foreground. 
uh, sort of grass, dead grass. Yeah, so this is just a quick little experiment. I would love to hear if you guys found this helpful and whether you have done this kind of thing before and if it's helped you sort of process ideas or create new ideas. I had a really good time and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye!